Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, day three of D&D Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the Magic the Gathering set spoiler season extravaganza continues on. And if you weren't up this morning, or actually afternoon, or actually I'm not really sure what time your time zone currently is, but if you haven't seen my episode on Orcus Prince of Undeath yet, make sure you check that one out. And also make sure you check out my most recent episode on Volo Guide to Monsters, who just yells YOLO about anti-tribal stuff. What exactly do I mean by anti-tribal? Well, make sure you check that episode out to find out. But not before you watch this episode on the very new janky alternative win condition. That's right, we've got an absolutely crazy new alternative win condition that... Well, let's just say it takes quite a few hoops to actually jump through to make it happen, but it's pretty awesome when it does. So what exactly is the deck of many things, and how do we win with it? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So our new alternative win condition comes from the deck of many things. It's a legendary artifact for five that has a lot of text, so here we go. Pay 2 and tap it, roll a d20, and subtract the number of cards in your hand. If the result is 0 or less, discard your hand. If the result is a 1 through 9, we return a card at random from our graveyard to our hand. If the result is 10 through 19, we draw 2 cards. And if the result is 20, we put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and when that creature dies, its owner loses the game. Now, if that's not a unique way to win, I don't know what is. And there's actually quite a bit going on here, so let's break down all the pieces of it and what you actually have to do to get set up to win. First off, not only do you have to use this to roll a natural 20, but you also have to do so without any cards in your hand. Because even if you pay 2 and tap this to roll that d20 and you roll a 20, if you've got 7 cards in your hand, you just basically got a 13. And while drawing two cards is nice in a lot of circumstances, it's not nice in this one. Because again with this, cards in hand equals bad. If we even just have one card in our hand, it's impossible for us to actually get that 20 and win. And actually, when I say win, okay, I guess what I really mean is alternative lose condition for our opponents, okay? But anyways, let's say that we have no cards in hand and we happen to get lucky enough to roll a 20. We then get to pick any creature from any graveyard and put it onto the battlefield under our control. Now, we're not necessarily looking for the most powerful creature out there, but sometimes that can help us out. What we're definitely not looking for, though, is a creature from our own graveyard because, yeah, if that creature goes away, we're the owner of that card, then we lose. And yeah, I know I saw some confusion about this card online. It does say owner, not controller. So yeah, basically you take an opponent's creature and then you control it, but you don't own it because it's their card. So if the creature dies under your control, that's fine. As long as it's actually someone else's card, then they lose, okay? Regardless, whatever creature we pick, we want to have a way to, you know, get rid of it. And actually, we probably want a way to get rid of it whenever we want. So a free sacrifice outlet or something along those lines could be fantastic in this deck. Essentially, we can just hold that opponent hostage and they basically have to do exactly what we tell them or, you know, we just kill their creature and they lose. So it's kind of like we've got an ally on the field who, who we're blackmailing, which is pretty funny. Anyways, obviously, if we want to take out all of our opponents with the deck of many things, it's going to be quite the challenge. We have to again get lucky enough to roll a 20 with no cards in hand and ensure that an opponent has a creature in their graveyard that we can get and kill. So yeah, in total, if we want to do an alternative win against all of our opponents, we've got to do this three times, which is quite the task. But of course, there are certain cards out there that can help us achieve this goal. This absolutely crazy and out there goal that I'm sure many players are going to build a deck around. So here we go.
First up, thankfully a new card was spoiled today named Pixie Guide. It's a 1-3 fairy with flying for 1 in a blue that says grant an advantage if you would roll 1 or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus 1 and ignore the lowest roll. So essentially this gives us 2 shots at hitting that 20, which as long as we've got no cards in hand is a 10% chance instead of our normal 5% chance, so yeah that's a pretty big bump up. And of course another thing to consider if we've got ways to tutor for this card and get it out are clones. So yeah, if we cast this or kick red replication on it, we're going to have a much higher chance of actually rolling a 20. So if you're building a deck around this alternative win condition, most definitely consider that. Also, because our deck is built around a singular card and we want to win with that card, of course we've got to run plenty of tutors to actually get that card out. So whether it's Diabolic Tutor, which can just tutor for one card, or Word of Invention that can actually just tutor for an artifact and get it directly into play, yeah, make sure you're running enough cards to actually get the card out so you can actually achieve your goal. And also, make sure that you've got plenty of backup plans to actually get the deck of many things back if you know it gets destroyed or whatnot. If you don't have any ways to recur it and that's your only way to win, well then you're kind of out of luck. Now when it comes to a commander that you're probably going to want to pilot the deck of many things... Deck? Yeah, I think that's right. Anyways, you're probably going to want to consider ones that are 5 color. Obviously, it just gives you access to every single card in Commander, which is nice, and yeah, you're probably going to need access to some pretty specific ones to actually make a deck like this work. Or at least I should say, work more efficiently. So yeah, Sissé Weatherlight Captain can be a great choice for this deck. She's a 2-2 Human Soldier for 2 and a white, and she gets plus plus 1 for each color among other legendary permits you control. By paying Wooburg, you search your library for a legendary permitting card with converted mana cost less than Sissé's power, put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So Sissé actually might be your best option since she can tutor out the deck of many things for you. Once you're set up and her power is up to 6, you can just pay that Wooburg and you can go get it and get it right into play. Obviously, Golos can be an effective choice as well. A 3-5 scout for 5 that says, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. It also has pay 2 and Wooburg, exile the top 3 cards of your library, you may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. So yeah, Golos is obviously a very powerful and versatile commander, and yeah, it can actually tutor out a land which is Inventor's Fair, which can help you go get the deck of many things. Another consideration might be Garth One-Eye. It's a 5-5 human wizard for Wooburg that has tap, choose a card name that has been chosen from among, Disenchant, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Create a copy of the card with the chosen name, you may cast the copy. So Garth is somewhat of a toolbox commander that can give us access to different spells to really help us out throughout the game. For example, if the deck of many things gets dealt with, we can use Garth to cast Regrowth to get it back. And after we get an opponent's creature, as long as it can be killed by Terror, well, we can just kill it with Terror. Or if it's an artifact or enchantment creature, we can even kill it with Disenchant. So yeah, Garth can be a good option as well. And obviously you don't have to select a 5 color commander, you can select one with less colors as well. But again with a 5 color commander, you're not limiting your options, and again you pretty much need all the help you can get when you're trying to pull off this kind of an alternative win condition. But now let's move on and talk about some cards that can help set us up for success. First up, you definitely want some ways to ensure that you don't have a hand. Avaricious Dragon is a 4-4 Flying Dragon and it says, at the beginning of your draw step, draw an initial card, and at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Grafted Skullcap essentially is the exact same thing, but it's an artifact for 4 and it's not a 4-4 Flying Dragon. Obviously. And then Song of Creation is an enchantment for 1 green, blue, red, and says you may play an initial land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw 2 cards, at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Obviously, all of these draw us extra cards and help us out in different ways, but the most important part is, at the end of our turn, we get rid of our hand. So at the end of our turn, they automatically help us meet that condition. And at the same time, they can also help us dig through our deck while doing so. Song of Creation obviously being the most impactful out of these. Regardless, luckily for us, the deck of many things does not say activate only as a sorcery. Thank goodness. So actually, in a pretty funny way, we can kind of hold that over our opponent's heads. If we have no hand and they decide to attack us, well, we're just going to be rolling the dice, and if we hit a 20, we might get a creature out of their graveyard and block the creature that's attacking us, and then that creature dies and they lose the game. Now, is that a small percentage chance? Yes, but some players might not be willing to take that chance if they're in a good spot. Regardless, of course, we've got other ways to completely get rid of our hand with things like Sire of Insanity and Null Brooch. Sire of Insanity does that, and then some, it says at the beginning of each end step, each player discards their hand. So, our opponents probably aren't going to be very happy with us, but they're going to be in the same boat that we are. Handless. And then Nobru Chaz, pay 2 and tap it, discard your hand, counter target non-creature spell. So this essentially is a repeatable negate that just ditches our hand, which again is fantastic for this kind of attack. And of course we've got some discard outlets that can help us out as well with things like Prognostic Sphinx, Patchwork Gnomes, and Season Hollowblade. 
Prognostic Sphinx is a 3-5 Sphinx with flying that has discard a card. It gains Hexproof until end of turn. Tap it. Whenever it attacks, scry 3. So this is a free discard outlet that can protect itself while also helping us dig through our deck. And then Patrick Gnomes is a 2-1 Gnome that says discard a card, regenerate Patrick Gnomes. Season Hollow Blade is somewhat similar. It's a 3-1 Human Warrior that says discard a card, tap Season Hollow Blade, it gains indestructible until end of turn. So yeah, each of these are fantastic discard outlets that we can just, you know, utilize whenever we need to to just completely get rid of our entire hand, and they protect themselves too. Two more I want to highlight though are Harnfell, Horn of Bounty, and Scuttletide. Harnfell, Horn of Bounty is actually the backside of the MDFC God Bergy, and it's actually really good for this deck. It's a legendary artifact for a 4 and a red, and says discard a card, exile the top two cards of your library, you may play those cards this turn. So actually, by discarding a card, we get access to twice as many cards, but again, the important part is we can just keep, you know, getting rid of our hand when we need to. And then Scuttle Tide is an enchantment for one and a blue, and it has pay one, discard a card, create a 0-3 blue crab creature token. And Delirium Crabs you control get plus plus one as long as there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard. Now, this one is not a free outlet, but it makes us a lot of little crabs, which can get slightly larger again throughout the game, which is nice. So we can use them as some fantastic blockers as we keep rolling some dice to try to win. And speaking of rolling dice... We can improve our chances with things like Lithoform Engine and Rings of Brightheart. Lithoform Engine has pay 2 and tap. Copy target activated or triggered ability you control, you may choose some targets for the copy. So when we activate the Book of Many Things, we can copy its ability and roll twice. In a similar way, there's Rings of Bright Hearth, which says, whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a man ability, you may pay two. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. So essentially, again, this is just pay two extra mana and roll again. And the more times we roll, the better chance we have to actually hit that 20 that we need. So we're also going to want ways to actually untap the Book of Many Things with things like Manifold Key, Clock of Omens, and Unwinding Clock. Manifold Key has pay one and tap to untap another target artifact. Clock of Omens has tap two untapped artifacts you control, untap target artifact. And Unwinding Clock says untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untapped step. Regardless, we're going to want a lot of these types of effects because, again, it might take a lot of rolls to actually hit that 20. And of course, after we actually hit that 20, we need to make sure we have a way to actually get rid of the creature that we get. So Wrath such as Wrath of God can come in really handy for this deck. Destroying all creatures can obviously get rid of the creature that we stole, and yeah, it also can help us stall throughout the game until we can actually roll that 20. And even a land like High Market can come in really handy with this deck. It has tap sacrifice a creature, you gain one life. A sacrifice outlet like this can come in really handy to ensure that we actually get rid of that creature. And actually, if we've got a free repeatable sacrifice outlet, then we can actually just, you know, hold that creature over our opponent's head and again, kind of, you know, blackmail them into being our ally. One last thing that you might want to consider, though, are cards like Fractured Sanity, which mill your opponents. It says each opponent mills 14 cards, and it's got cycling for one in a blue, and whenever you cycle it, each opponent mills four cards. If for whatever reason your opponents haven't played any creatures throughout the game, or they don't have any creatures in their graveyard, you might need to mill some in there. And if they don't have any creatures in their deck, well, you, you kind of might be out of luck. I mean, I guess you could kind of like, mind slaver them, cast their commander, and then sacrifice their commander, and then roll a 20, and then get their commander out under your control, and then sacrifice it. That would take a lot to do, but it is doable. Regardless, most of the time for the vast majority of decks out there, if you mill everyone 14 cards, chances are you're going to hit at least one creature per opponent. But with all that said, it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on the deck of many things. This card is the exact kind of alternative win condition jank that I like to see. There are so many hoops that you have to jump through to actually make this work and to win with this card, but it is going to be hilarious when you do. And of course, I am sure I failed to mention a lot of cards that work really well with this one, so in the comments below, make sure you let me know exactly what those cards are. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.